Hey, we want to welcome you back into the 53rd Avenue devotional cast. We are certainly glad that you are here. Coming to you on a Friday from the church office, this is episode 67 on Luke chapter 15. And so we are, again, so glad that you're here. Uh, let's go ahead and get right into God's Word. Uh, Luke chapter 15 is um, contains some very famous, well-known parables of Jesus, perhaps none more well-known and popularly told than that of what we call the prodigal son. Uh, and, and so that can be found in the latter half of this chapter. Uh, but today I think we're going to focus actually on the first story that Jesus tells. But uh, he tells three stories on a particular occasion that we read about in Luke 15 uh, and tells, tells these stories. And, and, and I want to set the stage for, for this teaching. He's, he's there and he's speaking to a, a group of people. And uh, looking at verse number one, the Bible reads, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So you've got kind of a, a group of people that is diverse in their walk with God. Uh, that's probably the best way I can say it. I mean, there's a very good chance that most, if not all, of those listeners were of the Jewish faith and the, the Jewish lineage. But as we, we read this passage, we see that you've got those that were considered spiritual leaders, folks like Pharisees and scribes who knew the law uh, and held positions of esteem. They were well respected in, in the world in which they lived, in the time that they lived. Uh, we don't always speak about Pharisees and Sadducees and different um, leaders of that time, the, those that were spiritual leaders of that time, in a very positive light. Uh, and largely that's because Jesus didn't speak of them in a very positive light. But to the average person, a Pharisee, a scribe, like these were respected men, people who had their spiritual lives together. And then you've got those in the first verse, the tax collectors, the sinners, uh, folks that would have been considered the low of the low in terms of spirituality. Uh, and and so you've got kind of this group of people that are all there gathered to, to see Jesus. Uh, and um, of course, the, you see this grumbling going on with the Pharisees and, and the scribes that they, they're frustrated that Jesus will associate with uh, these folks that are of lower spiritual stature because, well, they're, they're sinners. They're, they're not good people. You know, they, if Jesus only knew who he was talking to kind of thing. And so Jesus, of course, knowing what's going on, uh, proceeds to tell three stories really that are redemption stories. And so let's begin, like I said, we're going to focus on the first one today with the parable of the lost sheep, as we sometimes call it. So verse three, let's pick up. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. So, when we see this here in Jesus' teaching, you know, again, in all three of these parables are of a type. Um, interestingly enough, if you want to talk about it, with three stories all of them dealing with those who were lost, those who were sinners, those who have wandered off, if you will. There are actually four individuals who were lost. Um, one of them just didn't know it. But so, so here we have the parable of the sheep, and and you know th this this is about a sinner that's wandering off, essentially, right? Um, and, and and it's it's kind of a, a tragic story when you start to read it because the or at the beginning I should say it starts tragically, but obviously ends very well. But, you know, th this individual finds himself lost. Uh, I, I preached a sermon about this not too long ago. And, and you know, I, I, I read this, and, and each of the stories is a little bit of a nuanced difference. And, and this individual, it seems, was at one time in the right way, right? They were um, with the group doing the right thing, and and then they wandered off. And, and I think that's so true of a lot of... Um, modern Christians, uh, that, that, that our tendency is not to completely, you know, just rebel. And, you know, we've got a story about rebellion here too, the, of the story of the prodigal son, but this is not maybe that story. This is a story of, of someone who 
uh, wanders away and realizes after a time that they're lost. And I, and I think there's a lot of folks that, that fall in that category where, you know, they, they you know, were raised around the church or, or, or they were people that were people of faith at one time and, and things just happened. And before they knew it, you know, they, they were far from the relationship that they had with God. And so, you know, I think this is something powerful to think about, but, you know, sometimes we as the church struggle to always keep tabs on everybody. To know what people are always struggling with, to, to, to notice that people aren't always here, you know, especially as you get into kind of larger church settings and, and you know, most Sundays, for example, I, I don't get to talk to maybe even half of the people that are in the building, not even maybe close to that number, right? And so when I'm trying to go around and see people and, and lawn and others that, that we're trying to, you know, check on people, see how everyone's doing, you know, it, it doesn't always happen. And, and I hate to say that people slip through the cracks, but I think we're all flawed people and we, we sometimes people slip through the cracks. But I think the power of this story is, is God is saying, like, you haven't slipped through the cracks in his eyes, right? As Jesus is teaching here, he's saying, you know, the 99, they, they, they're here but I notice the one that's missing. I see that that that, that one of my sheep is not here, uh, and 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 is immediately concerned about that. And I think you know, as as we talk about, we're we're flawed human beings. But I hope that we get that spirit about us as we try to pattern our lives after Jesus. That we are concerned about the one that's not here. That we are concerned about those that we don't see. Uh, and, and I know that this is a special time, you know, under pandemic and, you know, some people are, are out of safety, not here. And, and, you know, but even so to reach out to them and make sure they're doing OK. Uh, and so I think in these cases, we, we, you know, we see this here and we see this beautiful aspect of God's nature that, that he notices uh, when one of his children is struggling, when one of his children is wandering off. And, and again, you know, it's God who ultimately redeems. Uh, that there is a joy about this redemption. You know, you see the, the sheep car being carried back home. And then, you know, you see the shepherd here in the story that he cannot wait to tell everybody he knows. I found, I found the sheep. It's, he's, you know, he's back. You know, brother so-and-so who we hadn't seen in a long time, he's back. Right? Sister so-and-so who's been struggling for who knows how long. We, we, we didn't even know where she was and she's back. You know, and so so here we see God is, is redeeming and he is bringing back into the fold. And he says, you know what this is? This is not a cause for, you know, anger or hostility and not even judgment. Right. Uh, that may be our like our natural setting. I, I, I hate to say it, but, you know, maybe it's human nature or something. But, you know, someone comes in that we haven't seen in one. We're like, hmm, what are they doing? Why would they think this is OK? We all know where they've been, you know, and, and we, we can get kind of high and mighty pretty fast. And I, I don't think we necessarily do that intentionally, but I think sometimes that's what happens in our hearts, right? As we're just sitting there, we're like, oh, I can't believe they're talking to her. We all know about her. I guess maybe, maybe they don't know about her because I don't think that they would be want to be chummy. They wouldn't want to be around her. And and I think we, we, we just need to be very careful because here God is saying, if we've got someone who has wandered off and we're able to bring them back, that is that is something we're celebrating. Right? It doesn't say that, you know, the 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 shepherd went around and just, you know, just everything he could find that he he could speak poorly of that sheep. In fact, no, it seems that he celebrated the return of the sheep and and was so joyful. And, and again, I think that's if you read the context of, of all of Luke 15, you see that this is the message right? That, that there is not, as the Pharisees and scribes said in verse two, this, you know, grumbling, this, this, this frustration, um, you know, Jesus died for sinners. Uh, not that I think any of us should glorify in sin, quite the opposite, right? Uh, we should do the best we can to avoid sinning, uh, and, and fill our lives up with good work and, and things that are pure and holy that, that, that there, of that, there can be no question. But none of us were saved by our own holiness. You see, it was God who noticed that we were stuck in sin. It was God who ultimately redeems us. And therefore, God is the one that gets to celebrate. And, and 
we have to decide day by day, are we going to participate in those things that God has set forth? Or are we going to delight in the redemption of others? Are we going to notice when one of God's people is struggling? Are we going to celebrate that beautiful day when a sinner returns home? And so I challenge all of us to try to you know, get that down into our spirits and to really try to live into that, uh, that beautiful truth uh, that you know, the reason Jesus came is to redeem sinners, even a sinner like me. And so let's uh, close with a word of prayer. Father Almighty God, we come before you and we, we thank you so much for this day, for the time that we can spend together in your word. Father, I am thankful for this passage of scripture in Luke 15. Father, for all of the stories that are found there that just remind us of the redemption that we have in Jesus Christ. That uh, even though we wander and find ourselves lost and, and sometimes rebel and whatever it is that, that keeps us from having a relationship with you, Father, that, that separates us from you, we, we are thankful um, that you love us enough that you will break that barrier down, that you will redeem us, and that you will celebrate Father, we, we know uh, that it is only through the power of Jesus that that happens. And so, Father, we thank you and give you all glory and praise and thank you for that sacrifice. Father, I hope and pray that we can also just have that same joy about us when it comes to uh, engaging with sinners and, and seeking the best for them as we, we try to, in a loving way, um, bring them back to you. And Father, we know that you are the one that's ultimately working in that. But Father, help us to notice and help us to care. Help us to take compassion on them and, and not to uh, become judgmental unnecessarily. Father, I pray as well that, that you would just bless us in this difficult day as, as Father, so many of us are, are isolated, uh, maybe not all of the time, but some of the time. And Father, I know that there's some that, that are feeling that isolation day by day, hour by hour. And Father, I, I pray that you would uh, continue to bless them and comfort them. Father, help us to to, to reach out to them and to, to continue to connect and, and build this community of the church. Father, the kingdom that, that, that you sent your son to establish. Father, we thank you so much again for Jesus and we offer this prayer in his precious name. Amen. Again, we'd like to thank you for being here. Uh, we will have some worship videos for you on Sunday, so we hope you'll, you'll tune in uh, on Sunday afternoon slash evening for those videos. Uh, and uh, next week, Lon will be back with you on Monday uh, for Luke chapter 16. And so we're so, again, so thankful you joined us. God bless you. Grace and peace. And we'll see you soon.